Consider the following 1978 IMO problem number 5 and here is a view of this problem. We are given a set of distinct positive integers a sub k, a sequence of distinct positive integers a sub k and we would like to show uh, or to prove um, that this inequality holds. Um, so what I want to do is uh, to solve this in twofold. Um, so let's first begin uh, by uh, considering the following. Let uh, a sub 1 prime, a sub 2 prime, and so on, a sub uh, n prime, uh, be a permutation, permutation of the uh, sequence of positive integers a k, right? Permutation of a 1 all the way up to a n. Um, such that, well, they are uh, ordered from the sm smallest to the largest, basically. So this is an increasing sequence, uh, and it's a permutation of the original given uh, sequence. Um, so notice that uh, because uh, this sequence ha uh, is made up of distinct uh, positive integers, uh, I think it's clear that uh, this implies... Um, well, uh, a1 prime is greater than or equal to 1, a2 prime is greater than or equal to, because a1 prime is less than a2 prime, uh, and a1 prime has got to be at least a number like 1, so a2 prime is has to be distinct, so this is at least 2, and so on, all the way up to a n prime is greater than or equal to n. So that would suggest that uh, the sum, uh, namely, um, well, a1 prime divided by uh, 1 square plus a2 prime 2 square plus all the way up to a sub n prime divided by n square. Uh, I think it's clear that each of these uh, the numerators are greater than 1 to all the way up to n. So therefore, we can just replace a sub 1 square with just 1 over 1, I believe. And the next one with 2, a2 prime with 2, basically, because it's greater than, that's why. So all the inequalities are in the same direction, in a sense. Uh, divided by 2 square, and so on. Um, and finally, uh, n over n square. But this is just equal to 1 plus 1 half plus all the way up to 1 over n, the harmonic sum. And this is indeed uh, the right-hand side of the desirable um, inequality, 1 over m. Uh, now, again, on the left-hand side, we better have the original uh, numbers, which is a1 square plus a2 over 2 square, all the way up to a sub n over n square. Currently, we have a1 prime over 1 square plus a2 prime over 2 square plus all the way up to a n prime over n square where this sequence of a1 prime a2 prime a n prime is a permutation of the original sequence. But it turns out uh, that uh, this is an even better condition so therefore what I want is to show that our original is even greater than this a2 over 2 square all the way up to a n over n square. So we want to show this, basically. And uh, what will come to our rescue would be something called the rearrangement, rearrangement inequality, a super useful inequality. Uh, it appeared in quite a few uh, IMOs and different contests. So let's state this rearrangement inequality. So let Let's start with two sequences, so let, um, but I don't want it to confuse with our uh, problem at hand, so let's have the following. Let x1, x2, and so on, all the way up to xn, and uh, y1, y2, uh, all the way up to yn be increasing sequences, and uh, also let, also let, um, well, uh, x1 prime, x2 prime all the way up to xn prime uh, be a uh, permutation as you can imagine 
of the sequence uh, of uh, x1 all the way up to xn. So then in that case, we have the following uh, inequalities. So first of all, um, this, well, which is based on the sum product. If you consider the following sum product, x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2 plus all the way up to uh, xn times yn. Uh, well, this is greater than or equal to um, any rearrangement of one of the sequences. For instance, x1 prime times y1 plus x2 prime times y2 and so on. All the way up to xn prime times yn. So, and this is further, um, let me uh, write it, continue here, greater than or equal to if we have the full uh, reordering of the of this xi sequence, namely xn times y1 plus x sub n minus 1 times y2 and so on, all the way up to x1 times yn. So the main claim is the following then. So you have uh, your sequence which, um, well, you have your two increasing sequences. The sum product, look at the maximal sum product. So this is the maximum. So this is the maximal sum product, maximal. And this one is the minimum. So when the corresponding sum product, the, the terms are multiplied, where x1 is the smallest, is multiplied with the smallest in the second sequence, and so on. x2 is multiplied with y2, and you can see it here, and so on. You get a maximal sum product versus when the smallest in one sequence is multiplied with the largest in the other sequence. In that case, you will get the minimal uh, some uh, product and anything in between <laughs> anything is in between any permutation is in between so if you are not uh, uh, paying attention to their ordering in terms of their size then you know that the sum product will be squeezed it in between those two maximal and minimal sum products um, and that's it so that's a super useful result uh, and we will directly apply it to our problem, namely this inequality that we still didn't prove yet. So in that case, our sequences will be the following. So one of the sequences, so the sequence x1, x2, according to the statement of this uh, uh, rearrangement. And pr the proof, by the way, is in any standard textbook. You can find the proof or on the web, you can easily find the proof of these uh, inequalities. It's called the rearrangement inequality. So in, in this case, uh, as our first sequence, uh, we are we can pick uh, our, um, if um, well, we can pick a sub 1 prime, a sub 2 prime, and so on a sub n prime and um, for the rearrangement of this uh, with respect to this notation uh, so we can take x sub 1 prime x sub 2 prime so x sub n prime i know it's confusing sorry for that guys a2 all the way up to a n so this is uh, in a sense ordered so this one is ordered from the smallest to the largest this one is just mixed so this one is mixed but this is the original right this is the original given sequence to us the original sequence now consider uh the following so noticing that we have in the denominator one over one uh one square one over two square one over n square we can come up with this very cute uh sequence y sub n is equal to one over uh, one square uh, one over two square and so on one over n square um, well, uh, this sequence is a decreasing sequence. So when I say ordered here, it ordered and increasing here for the a sub i prime. In this case, this is ordered and <laughs> decreasing. Uh, now I'm going to match up their respective terms, meaning, huh? so I'm going to match up these two and then these two, and I will calculate the sum product. But because they are, one of them is in increasing and the other one is decreasing, it's finding, it's like finding the minimal. And anything, any uh, permutation like this one, multiplied with this, so the sum product of the two will be definitely greater than or equal to that minimal condition. So therefore, uh, by the uh, rearrangement inequality, forgive my handwriting, uh, we have that, so we know for sure that um, 
what? Um, well, uh, so let's first write the minimum side or, or the, the, the greater than side because eventually that's what we want. So, uh, well, definitely a1 over 1 square plus a2 over 2 square and so on. Uh, a sub n over n square is definitely greater than or equal to, well, uh, a sub 1 uh, prime over 1 square where a sub 1 prime was the smallest among all the ai primes. 8 sub 2 prime over 2 square and so on a sub n prime over n square and notice earlier we have proven that this sum is already greater than or equal to this harmonic partial sum this is greater than or equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus all the way up to 1 over n and uh, and that's it so, so this follows directly from this rearrangement inequality if you wonder uh, this is also greater than or well uh, so uh, uh, less than or equal to the following expression where a1 prime over n square plus if you I, I, I mean obviously this is not part of the question but if you wonder this thing is the largest among all of them right so a sub n prime over one square so this is the largest this is the maximal this is uh, in the middle and then this is the smallest because we are mixing the two sequences in opposite orders. So, but that's it. That does it. So the left-hand side here, left-hand side of the desired inequality, and this was the right-hand side. If you check that, and that's it. So we have just proven the validity of this desired inequality, and we're done.